And now, so that nine and ten, that two hundred and thirty-five k, that's how much we got, or is that how that's much we got less than the previous year? No, no that's, that's how much, much we received in that year. All right, so this isn't a real reduct. We don't. Look, you're saying reduction, but it's reducing from this amount from the two thirty-five to the forty-six. Down and to the eleven. Districts that are at 55 mills are increasing their local revenue to cover this. We don't have that ability. Mm -hmm. The cost of 55. So, as far as we compare it to last year, it's the difference between 46k and 11k. Right. We get a 35k reduction, basically. Right, for this budget, yes. But I wanted y'all to see how much reduction had happened over both years. Yeah. See what the legislature, you know, up until 910 for. 18 years or um, 17 years, the district received the money. And then all of a sudden, this is one of the places that the legislature is taking it. Now, this goes into the uh, district maintenance. District maintenance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, on uh, expenditures. Basically, another unfunded mandate from the state is the employer contribution to retirement is increased from 12%, it's increasing from 12% to 12.93 on January 1, 2012. In this budget, we figured all of our employees at 12.55%, which is the average of the two, considering most employees are paid five months at 12% rate and seven months at the 12.93% rate. The retirement newsletter and what's posted at the retirement system now is they want to increase it to 14.17% on July 1, 2012. This is something to be thinking about for next year's budget. Who's wanting to increase it? The retirement it? system is on their website. <clears throat> That's what they're now, What group is wanting to increase this and what is their... The retirement system. Mississippi PERS, Public Her. Employees Retirement System. And I guess what uh, you would know better. What is their justification? It has increase? to do with their actual information that you can read it out their their retirement system. And they generally go to the legislature trying to get these things increased. And this is mandatory here? Yes. Yes. Any employee who works more than um, twenty hours a week is required to be part of the retirement system. So what their salary is, we have to match it by twelve point nine three percent above. Right. That's the part that has to go with every pay. The only employees that are um, exempt from retirement generally are substitute teachers. If they're not retirees, there's a new rule concerning retirees. Um, you have to pay it on retirees um, starting July 1, 2011. Just so. Okay. Wait a minute. We still have to pay retirees that are, that are collecting them. They just passed that rule. Anybody that is retired, at that same percentage? Agency, the employer share has now got to be paid. So your advantage of hiring retirees just hurts you. Because the retiree doesn't get anything for it either. They don't get a bump in their retirement. It's just the retirement system trying to get more revenue. Okay. Okay. On um, uh, expenditures by option. We just ran real quick looking at the total budget. Um, salaries and benefits, and you can see that 73.55% of the total is pure salaries and benefits, okay? Now, when you say salaries and benefits, it's health care, retirement, everything that we put on top of the flat salary. Right. Right. That's the amount. Okay. Now, looking at this in total, looking at your, your front page of this document, Okay, can you write that one just a second? Sure. Okay. On that, of that salary and benefits, what percent of that salary is the benefit? Um, well, okay, 12.55 is retirement, 7.65 is going to be Social Security, 42.72 is health insurance. Is that correct? 42.72. And then there's a little life insurance match that has to do with uh, it's about 12, 12 cents a thousand. thousand, and you multiply the thousand by two. Like if you're an employee and you make 25000 a year, you can buy up to $50,000 worth of life insurance. You pay 12 cents per thousand, and the district pays 12 cents per thousand. And then workers' comp is the only other piece to that. 
Right, is there any part of those benefits that can be adjusted? Do we have authority to adjust? No, not at all. All of it is state mandated. And that's something that many cities and counties do not understand because they have options in those areas and school right. districts do not. So that's, that's where, where you are on that. So, you know, then this kind of just shows you that just about all of your budget is in, is in person. So the 6.9 million is what we have to cover all other uh, expenses with the exception of salaries and benefits. Everything. Debt payments, utilities, um, all of your books and supplies and all of those kinds of things. Everything else. Any other questions? And that includes, we'll go through this in just a minute, but it includes some construction also. Yeah. Okay. All right. By function in total. Under on this sheet, when you when you run into this little booklet right here, the total budget, you can see where 51.88% is in instruction, support services, which includes your your support services includes everything from your guidance counselors, your librarians, your principals, your general administration, your operation and maintenance of plant, and transportation is um is 37.11 percent non-instructional services is generally food service and parental involvement for your federal program 1.36 i mean um 4.18 i'm sorry facilities acquisition and construction now there's not a lot of construction other than the cbg cbg I'm sorry, y'all. Hey, four times. Community Block Development Grant. I'll just say it that way. I'll have had too many um, acronyms today. Um, we have that, and then we owe the district owes thirty thousand dollars left on a FEMA project, and that's pretty much all of the construction that is left to be done for this next year, unless some more grants come in. Okay, and then debt service. That is the amount for the debt service payments of the of the total budget now as y'all as we talked last last time we talked about the community i mean the community disaster grants and this year will be the first year of the payments on the community disaster grants and um and in in your book in your book list um the first the payments are going to be 498,141 per um Per, per year for the next five years. We're still trying to get this thing forgiven. We have gotten partial forgiveness, but um, we are not, we have not been successful at that yet. Is that FEMA and FEMA? That is the Community Disaster Grant, not the FEMA, the construction the stuff. That we, uh, we, every city, every um, yeah. district was given after the storm. We were told originally it would all be forgiven. We drew down four point five million or something like that over a three year period, four year period, whatever it was. Um, they came in, they changed the rules, now they would look at it on an individual basis as to whether they would forgive or not. They have forgiven, they first said we had to pay all of it back. Um, Jamie, and I met with them numerous times, Jamie provided a lot of information, they did um, forgive two point, what was it, two point four million? Right, I believe so. We've got two point one two eight plus interest. Left to pay. And just, so we have written an appeal from Washington. We feel like all of it should be forgiven. We haven't gotten an answer to the appeal. The next step after that, if they deny it, is um, our attorneys and then fight it that way. And there are schools that have been successful. So, so we just can't move forward until we get an answer to the appeal. Okay. All right. Now, um, looking at the background, um, this is the instruction support services, um, facilities acquisition and debt service amount for your budget. Okay, now, in, in figuring budgets um, for this next year, there have been, um, basically since our last meeting, at the, originally, black, 
at the last meeting when we talked about fund balance for next year. We estimated that the district would end up with um, $4,220,000 is what we, I'm going to switch to a slide, is what we originally had said. Since all of this information has come to light, we've had several employees decide not to come to the district or resign. Every one of those have been absorbed by Ms. Hamilton as far as working with within the district. When you and say absorbed, they weren't rehired? They, they were not, we did not rehire. Right. And people have been being moved around. How I many is that? You, and, and, how many are you talking about? We had about six originally. I think six. And then we had to absorb some of those federal cuts. So the total amount now that we're projecting ending fund balance to be at the end of June 30th of 2012 is the 4940302, which is a savings of $518,000. So already that is what has been absorbed um, in the last three weeks. Now that means that there's less nurses, there's less gifted teachers, there's and some people have been moved from school to school yes. um, to cover there's some classes. Being shared and we are meeting, a, we went with, our, in making the decisions, I made sure we met state accreditation guidelines, not necessarily what we'd like to do, but we did, we do meet state accredited guidelines and we are just going to help work within this. And there will be more of this next year. All right, so now that report that you gave us a few weeks back that had all the teachers that are currently on board teachers, well, we have an update of that. You have it. The board members have that in the bottom of their sheet. Okay, good. And it highlights the ones that are no longer impacting our budget. I deleted. No. I deleted a few. I mean, I just I deleted can, the line. I can come up with those names for you. Yes. Yeah. Well, like you know, like nurses. Uh, how did we do it? Some, um, there was a nurse that there was a nurse that decided um, she could not afford to take the pay cut to come, mm -hmm. so we did not replace that. That nurse contacted us in July. There were originally four nurses, and right. now we're down to now three. down to three. Right. We have lost two gifted teachers. Um, we were going to be hiring a social studies teacher and a science teacher at the middle school. When we found out our numbers, we stopped that. We moved an interventionist and certified in science to that spot. And I had a gifted teacher that was certified in social studies. We talked to the state, and because of the budget constraints, gifted is no longer funded separately the way it's supposed to be. Um, the legislature has just put all the money in one batch. So um, we put we pulled that gifted teacher and moved to the social studies position. The state said they will work with us as long as we don't go over 60 students per teacher in a week. And then this last week, we had another gifted teacher resign to move out of the area. We didn't replace that one. We shifted some teachers, gifted teachers. So the gifted teachers will have what is considered a full load. They will have 55 to 60 students, but it still meets the correct guidelines. Um, we did, I thought there was one other person that left. We, um, we, we did not fill a slot in, the, in janitorial. In janitorial, we cut a slot there. Um, we had some things that we moved to people around. Um, so, uh, we we had a librarian leave and we did not fill that slot. Um, the Craig says the accreditation guidelines say that if a school has less than 500 students, you can get by with a half-time librarian. It's not the best scenario, but that's what we can do. So we moved um, an assistant from the high school. They lost an assistant, uh, an instructional assistant position that. Um, I have one librarian that will be part-time, half a day at Quarles, half a day at Reeves, and we'll probably do it on a couple of weeks. She'll be at one school in the morning and the other school in the afternoon. And when she's not at the school, that assistant will be there so that the library can stay open and service our students that way. 